welcome back to my channel. I have a bit of a cold, sorry. So we have been working in my craft room. We're in it right now. We did the rainbow wallpaper. We smoothed the walls. And now I have this wall that's totally empty because I have been wanting to add storage so badly. So I will be working on projects and I'll buy stuff for it. So I really need a spot that I can like put bins with things like future project or just like more craft supplies. So that's what we're making today. This is going to be an Ikea hack and I am very excited about it. I went to Ikea. I looked at all their stuff. I decided on the Ivar cabinet. They're really affordable. I think $120 for a cabinet. So I got two of those and we are going to be adding a faux bamboo molding, which I think is going to be really chic and affordable to do. So let's dive in. We're going to start by assembling the Ivar cabinets. You just follow the instructions from Ikea. This is a really simple build. Essentially, you attach the side to the top and bottom with the screws. The back slides on with a support piece. And if you are planning on wallpapering the inside, it's best to have the flat slash smooth side on the inside and the rough side on the back. The last side is screwed into the piece and this makes up the frame of the cabinet. Put the cabinet on its bottom, then inside the hinge plates need to be screwed in place. Next, the hinges need to be attached to the doors. Then the doors can be connected to the cabinet with screws from the hinge to the hinge plates. If you have a gap between your doors on the Ivar, all you need to do is adjust the hinges. The back screw on the hinge needs to be loosened first, then loosen the front screw and adjust the hinge by pulling it left or right. Once the door is in a good place, you can tighten both screws so it stays in place and you repeat for each hinge and you close the door and make sure there are any additional tweaks that need to take place. And by making these simple adjustments, it'll close the gap really nicely. Okay, so here's how this cabinet looks over here. It fills the space really nicely, but it really doesn't open well because it needs a base. So we're gonna build a base to elevate it a little bit. And then we gotta paint the whole thing. I'm just thinking white because, well, there's a bit of color going on in here. And I also need to add the cool molding. So I need to go to the hardware store, get some stuff, and then we can start working on this. We ran to the store to get supplies and they are all linked on my blog. Then we went outside in the cold to start cutting everything. It has been negative 20 degrees here and so it was very fun to be cutting outside. I wish I had a spot inside to cut but I have a cut list on my blog with exactly what to cut if you're going to do this exact same project. And now let's build the base for the cabinet. For this we're doing two by fours and you could use legs on this but I don't want to have to clean underneath this especially because it's a craft room. So we're drilling holes in the side of the long two by fours we're going to do two on each end then using screws we're going to attach the long boards to the short boards repeat for each end of both of the long two by fours this creates a rectangular shape the perfect base once the base is built you're going to put the eye bar cabinets on top of it this is so the cabinets can be connected together so we're going to use one and a fourth inch long screws to attach them so it works great to use two screws on the top section and two on the bottom portion of the cabinets we also need to attach the Ivar cabinets to the base that we just built. So we're going to use two inch long screws for this. We're going to use three in the front and three in the back. It's going to be very sturdy because we're using 12 screws between the two cabinets. This creates one very sturdy piece. Next, let's work on the top. With the Ivar cabinets connected, the top really doesn't look very finished. To remedy that, we bought a pine piece of wood. It came a little rough, so that needed to be sanded smooth first. Then there were some areas with divots, especially with the knots. For that, I like to use wood filler. Once that's dry, we're gonna sand it nice and smooth, and then it's time for a stain. So I have a table next to this cabinet, and it has a pink top, so I decided we could match it. And to apply the stain, all we're gonna do is brush it on and then use a rag to remove the excess stain that didn't soak in. The thing I'm most excited about on this cabinet is on the doors, I'm going to do some bamboo trim and I'm making it myself because buying it is pretty expensive. So what I have is these half round pieces of wood and I have marked on here with a pencil where I want the bamboo detailing. So I am doing this with wood filler, which you can just get at the hardware store. And I am putting it on with like this spatula thing. And then I just have this card and it's like, um, like, it's like credit card thickness, but it's just from like an entertainment thing that I don't need anymore. So what we did was we used the drill and we, um, I turned it on and my husband pushed it in the spot where we needed it to make these two tiny little divots on it. And then I'm putting wood filler on and I'm putting it on nice and thick. And then I am taking the card and where I marked the spot, which is a little hard to see once it's on, 
Um, so if you mark it on the bottom, that would be better. So you know where to start and stop. And you take it and you push it and you go nice and slow and you kind of keep the card as flat and straight as you can and you scrape it off and you get these two little um, nice bamboo details. So you wanna do that on your wood pe trim pieces and then you're gonna let it dry and then you can put it on the cabinet and paint it. So isn't that a cool detail? For the bottom of the cabinet, I wanted to cover the two by four base with baseboards. So what we did was we first ripped the baseboard down to the same height as the two by four, which is three and a half inches. And then we cut it so it'd be the perfect fit to fit around the front and the sides of the base. To attach the trim to the base, use a nail gun. For the cabinet body, I painted it a high gloss white. I've been liking the look of lacquered furniture and thought the high gloss will give kind of a fancy look. So I used a ruler to apply the paint so it'd go on smooth without brush marks, which the gloss will make stand out. The cabinet needed four coats of paint to get the pure white color. I am very happy with how these turned out, but I want to show you up close. You can see like there's extra wood filler above and below the ridges I added. So I just need to take a sander and clean them up a little. On the front of the doors, use a pencil and a speed square to mark two inches in from the sides. This line will be where the outside of the trim will sit. Place the bamboo trim on the inside of the pencil lines. Use construction adhesive to adhere the trim onto the front of the doors. If needed, use clamps to hold the trim flush onto the doors. The glue takes about 40 hours to fully set, but I found that after an hour, it was set enough that I could fill the corners with wood filler. We decided to add some wood round knobs to the front of the doors at this point. I wanted to be able to paint the details at the same time. Knobs aren't really necessary for this project since there's a lip on the door that's easy to grab, but it's a nice detail. Once those were on, I painted the trim and the knobs white. The top of the cabinets weren't quite flat, so we sanded them so the top would sit on them and be level. Then we used one and a fourth inch screws to attach the top to the cabinets. Screw them in from the inside of the cabinet so they don't show through the top. At this point, I thought it would be nice to wallpaper the inside of the cabinet. That br dark brown backer board is not cute. So I covered each one in wallpaper paste and then adhered the rainbow striped wallpaper so it matches my wall. And the wallpaper went on easier on the smooth side. So if you have a choice between having the rough side and the smooth side on the inside, do the smooth side because the wallpaper is much easier. Last, we put the doors back on the front of the cabinet and here is how my craft room storage cabinet turned out i am so excited to have storage in here and i think it's a really beautiful piece i love this ivar ikea hack because it's really a blank slate with endless things that could be done with it you could totally customize this and i really like how the bamboo trim looks perfect in this room it's so chic so for this project i spent 250 dollars on the two ivar cabinets 20 dollars on paint the half round molding was $28. I already had wood filler and screws on hand. Wood knobs cost me $4. I also bought um, two by fours, baseboards for $25, and the topper piece of wood was $16. So in total, I spent $343 on this IKEA iBar hack. I would love to hear what you think of it. Um, let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe for more videos like this.